I'm Kevin Passaro of Overwork Corporation and our two stores, BigBinoculars.com and GiantBinoculars.com. We have a very special binocular here in our showroom. It's possibly the largest privately owned binocular in the world, and in any case, it's certainly the most unique. Although it looks quite modern, it's actually a World War II battleship binocular made by uh, Nikko of uh, Japan. Most World War II battleship binoculars were smaller than this. They typically had objectives of about 120 millimeters in size, which is about um, 5 inches. This particular binocular uh, is very unusual. Only a, a handful were made. It has objective lenses of 180 millimeters in diameter, which is 7 inches across. This binocular was restored by Kevin Kuhn. Kevin Kuhn um, was a machinist who had a passion for uh, military binoculars and restoring them and modifying them. And he became uh, one of the world's foremost authorities uh, on the subject. There's a very uh, famous book, a reference book, uh, called uh, Military Binoculars for Land, Sea, and Air Service uh, by Dr. Hans Seeger. Um, it's written in German, but uh, Kevin Kuhn uh, actually contributed a couple chapters to that, and his, uh, his chapters are in English. Kevin Kuhn is probably best known for um, restoring a huge 200 millimeter binocular, which was made by Zeiss of Germany. Uh, the restoration was commissioned by the Smithsonian's Naval History Center. And that binocular is currently on loan to a museum in Koblenz, Germany, right now. Kevin said he knew of uh, four uh, 180 millimeter uh, binoculars that survived the war. But uh, all of them had damaged glass, uh, chips, and various other problems, except for this one. This is the only 180mm uh, binocular that uh, we are aware of that uh, survived the war with the glass intact. In fact, he, uh, when he found this one, he, he decided to keep it. <laughs> and he, uh, he had it in his living room in his home in Torrington, Connecticut, until his untimely passing uh, last year, January of 07. Kevin designed and machined the uh, massive fork mount that you see here. Also, this uh, elaborate counterweight system and the uh, glare shields with integrated um, objective covers, which are spring loaded. The uh, the counterweight system is required to balance these glare shields with the integrated objective covers. He had also built two aperture stop inserts which would go inside the glare shields and effectively reduce the aperture of the binocular which would increase the focal length and enhance performance under certain conditions. Unfortunately those aperture stop inserts have been lost but we still need the uh, counterweight system to offset the weight of, of the objective covers. And the other thing he did was he added the integrated uh, forehead rest, adjustable, and a very high quality finder scope. One of Kevin's specialties was installing wide angle German uh, eyepieces on uh, these giant Japanese uh, battleship binoculars. He felt that uh, the German eyepieces of that era were far superior to the Japanese eyepieces and they brought out the best possible performance out of these binoculars. And this was no exception. This uh, particular binocular originally had uh, 22x and 30x eyepieces on the, this flat turret system. Kevin replaced those with uh, Zeiss eyepieces, very high quality eyepieces, the larger eyepieces here are 30x and the smaller are actually 60x. The turret system is uh, similar to the turret system found on the Overwork uh, Long Range Observation Binocular. This has uh, 25x eyepieces and 40x eyepieces on these rotating domed turrets. It works like that. The Overwork uh, turrets have detents so the eyepieces snap into position. The Nico turrets do not. There are, there are no detents here. You simply rotate so the eyepieces are lined up 
and then look through it, and then find it just to get perfect vertical alignment between the two sides. So it's always in perfect collimation. The IPD adjustment, or inner pupil distance adjustment on this binocular is right here. And the range is very wide. It goes down to a minimum of 60 millimeters. So that should work for most people. It goes as wide as you could ever need. It goes up to about 90 millimeters in width, which is, like I said, much wider than the typical binocular. We haven't actually weighed this binocular, but I estimate that uh, just the binocular itself without the counterweights is going to be at least 150 pounds. It takes uh, two strong men to lift this binocular off of the fork. The whole system is going to be just over 300 pounds with uh, the fork mount and the pier. The binocular and fork sits on a Gibraltar pier, which is rated for 400 pounds, so it's up to the task. It has an adjustable elevator that has about 12 inches of height adjustment, so the binoculars will go tall enough for even somebody that's well over six feet. Kevin machined an extra azimuth bearing for the fork so that if somebody wanted to construct a permanent pier, the bearing is here, ready to go. And that's about it. Thanks for watching.